Welcome, Ben Mama. say the words Commodore and 16-bit to pretty much anyone with even a passing interest in computing or video games, then they're going to instantly mention the Amiga. And of course they would. The Amiga was a huge success for the company and enjoys a pretty significant legacy to this day. But did you know that the Amiga wasn't actually Commodore's first 16-bit computer? That honour actually goes to a little-known machine by the name of the C900, and this is the story of a system that was pretty much doomed from birth. The first thing worth mentioning here is that the C900 came from rather unusual origins, Commodore's West Germany office. To set the scene somewhat, the Commodore 64 had been the best-selling home computer in Germany almost since its introduction, and had been used for just about everything from business to gaming. For the price of a Commodore 64, here's what you get from Apple, from IBM. For what it costs to add a Commodore disk drive, Apple, IBM. Add a Commodore printer, Apple, IBM, the PC Junior. Add a Commodore modem, and now you can get an Apple IIe or an IBM PC Junior with three games. Is it any wonder Commodore sells more computers than Apple and IBM combined? The year is 1984, and although the 64 had only been out for a couple of years, Commodore Germany knew that if they wanted to keep up their market share, then they needed to come up with something new. This was especially true in the business market, where Apple had just launched a revolutionary Macintosh and PC compatibles were starting to make inroads. There were also rumblings that Commodore's biggest rival, Atari, had a new 16-bit computer in the works too. Rather than wait for parent company Commodore International to come up with something new, the German division set to work on developing a computer of their own, which they would codename the Z-Machine, after the system CPU, a 16-bit Zilog Z8000. This was considered a very strange choice at the time for numerous reasons. Firstly, because people naturally would have expected the C5816, which was a 16-bit evolution of the 6502, a chip Commodore themselves owned through their acquisition of MOS technologies, or even the Multiroller 68000, which was already being used by Apple and widely regarded as the best CPU in its class. While Zilog Z80 had been hugely successful CPU that had been used in computers such as the ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, MSX and all 8-bit Sega systems, its successor didn't offer the same appeal. It was considered to be poorly made, leading to internal failures, with a raft of crippling bugs that were awkward to work around. It also lacked backwards compatibility with the Z80, something that people pretty much expected when it was first announced. Because of this, it was never used in anything other than a few low-end, non-PC compatible business computers, like the Olivetti M20. The operating system designed to run the whole computer was called Coherent, a highly compatible clone of Unix that had been first released in 1980 by Mark Williams' company. Magazines at the time stated that while Coherent was hard to navigate, it did offer an astounding array of features once you got to grips with it. By the time the C900 arrived, it had also gone through numerous revisions to keep it up to date. The Commodore 900 was first shown to the press in 1985 and would initially come in two varieties, a server with a text-only display and a PC-like workstation featuring a very high-resolution monochrome display. The latter was obviously created as a direct competitor to the Apple Mac and was where Commodore saw most of their sales coming from. This version of the C900 would also be fully upgradable with the ability to add things such as graphics and sound cards, a blister chip and numerous peripherals, much like a PC in fact. No doubt this upgradability would have eventually led to the machine being repurposed for gaming. Well, it would have, had it hadn't been killed off by Commodore shortly after launch. You see, shortly after the C900 made its debut, Commodore International had announced that they had completed the purchase of Amiga Technologies, and would now be producing and marketing their groundbreaking 16-bit computer, having stole it from the clutches of Atari.
experience the mind unbounded. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. No sooner was this announcement made that Commodore West Germany received the order to cancel the 900 completely, withdraw it from sale and start promoting the upcoming Amiga instead. Remember that initially Commodore very much positioned the Amiga as a business machine, so the C900 would have been seen as a direct competitor. Before the Commodore 900 was withdrawn from sale, a small amount did make it out into the world, and these are now highly sought after by collectors. However, with very little software available for them, they remain pretty much useless, and nothing more than an interesting curiosity. I think we can safely say that the C900 was definitely the wrong option for Commodore, and would have almost certainly lost out to Apple, Atari and the many PC compatibles of the time. Its high price and archaic architecture would have sealed its fate long before anyone investigated its much vaunted ex expandability. The Amiga was certainly the best way to go for Commodore, and I find it interesting that the first Amiga machine released was the Commodore 1000. Was this a direct reference back to the Commodore 900? It certainly seems like it. Do you think Commodore made the right choice going with the Amiga, or would you have liked to have seen what they could have done with their own internally developed machine? Please let me know in the comments. But before I go, I must thank all my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. So special thanks to Thunder Fundington, John DiLiberto, Keith, Carl Olson, Larry Anderson, Mark Slorence, Mr. Caboto, Psycho Lavos, and Scott McGuire. If you want to do the same, then go check out my Patreon right now and get access to a host of extra content including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, and I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.